Ubiquiti just released their first travel router, but there's a big catch that a lot of you might have not noticed. It is 2026, and this thing is only still running Wi-Fi 5. Did Ubiquiti make a massive mistake, or is this actually a really smart $79 gadget? Well, let's explain. For those of you who do not know, this is the new travel router from Ubiquiti. This is a $79 router, and it essentially has only one function, and that is to bring your Wi-Fi network with you from home when you travel. It does not do anything fancy. There's no integrated Unify controller, nothing like that. Its sole job is to run a VPN tunnel to your house. And this is the travel router. So we have all been there. We've been in the hotel. The hotel Wi-Fi has a captive portal that doesn't work with your Apple TV or your security camera or whatever you have with you when you're traveling. And it's insecure. And the worst part of all is you cannot access your home server. I've been there way more times than I'd like to admit. Inside the box is very, very simple. So you get the actual unit itself of the actual travel router. As you can see right here, this is the travel router. It is very small. You also get a USB-C cable that is braided and it looks all nice, kind of like an Apple one. And the best part of all of this is that this thing runs off of USB-C entirely. So there's no external power brick that you need. You can use your phone charger. You can use your laptop charger. You can use literally anything. It is just like a like portable charger, I guess. Um, you literally plug it into any USB-C cable and that should be enough power to run this device. Very small, very lightweight, and it's very, very cool. The teleport feature is the biggest part of the device. So let's say I'm over in London and I'm in a hotel, but I wanna access my Plex server from my Apple TV that I brought with me when I traveled. Well, traditionally you'd have to port forward that, it would be insecure, all of that kind of stuff. But with this device, you literally just have to bring it, plug it into USB and plug it into your Apple TV and you are good to go. This thing has three uplinks that you can have. You can have USB from your phone, you can tether it, it has ethernet, and it also has a Wi-Fi uplink for those captive portals at hotels or whatever, or even if without a captive portal, it has Wi-Fi and that's super awesome. So without further ado, let's fire the device up and check it out for the first time. Just so we can mimic what this is like if we were at a hotel or something, I'm gonna plug this into my battery bank and we'll run this off the battery bank and that's gonna do two things for us. First of all, it'll show us how much power we're using, but also it can show you how portable this setup really is. So it is now firing up. You'll see on the screen, we have the Ubiquiti logo. You can power it through the middle USB-C port and there is a USB-C port on the side that you plug in your phone to. There's also the two ethernet ports, which flips up just like a old laptop does. Um, I remember these things from when I was younger. You flip it up and then you plug your cable in. It gives you enough space to do that. This thing is a awesome, awesome size. So let me show you something for comparison. This is a Raspberry Pi right here in my hands. It is literally the size of a Raspberry Pi just as thin if not thinner as a Raspberry Pi in pretty much the same area as the Pi. I also have a USB SSD right here. Again, it is literally about the same size as the SSD. They're both about the same. Um, and this has a lot more features than this simple one terabyte SSD does. It says it's ready for setup, so let's get started and we'll set this guy up. Okay, so right here on our Unify app, I'm gonna have to blur out basically everything on your screen. But if we go to the bottom of the screen, you guys will see we have a travel router that is showing up at the bottom and it's gonna load in all of the information here. So first of all, we have very basic settings for us. Um, we can select our Wi-Fi uplink, which we have multiple options here. We will give this a Wi-Fi network that we have here at the house. Um, I will mimic what this looks like if we were to, for say, um, be traveling or something. We'll connect this to a different console that I have um, just so we can try that feature out. But for now, we'll set up with a Wi-Fi uplink from my home Wi-Fi. Um, and then what we will do is we will assign this to a site. So now that we have um, internet connection, it's connecting right now. Um, you can actually see on the device the internet DBM, how much connection you have basically. Um, it should be connecting to that, but we will also grab an ethernet cable. Let's wire this into ethernet and try it out that way. So this thing should work with pretty much any ethernet cable. There are two ethernet ports. One is for WAN, one is for LAN. So I will plug this into the WAN port. Um, and you'll see, by the way, the internet is online. It is connected, um, but we will plug this in. An odd thing is that it doesn't snap into the port, but it looks like it's plugged in. So we'll see. Um, there's also ethernet. Yep, we have ethernet as well. So there are multiple uplink options, which is a really nice feature of the device. It's very versatile. Um, we'll go over here. Um, it says bring your network. So bind your travel router to, to your Unify site. 
your networking devices follow automatically. So that is a really cool feature of this device, by the way. So what we can do is let's say we're traveling, let's say we're in a hotel and we don't necessarily trust the hotel. What we can do is we can bring any unified camera or any unified device with us and plug it into the ethernet port and it will be connected to your home site just like normal. So in theory, we could bring a switch with PoE or something and we could bring a camera as well and power the PoE camera and have that all in our hotel room. Um, all of that stuff would be a lot bigger than just this device is, but it is a nice feature that we have because it allows us to bring other devices with us. So what we can do on here is it says bind to site. So we will bind to site and we have a few sites we can pick from. We'll pick this one right here. And we are also able to select a Wi-Fi network that we want to bring with us. So this is only going to take one Wi-Fi network from the remote site. Um, in this case, we are going to pick the guest network. Um, this is from the church that I uh, work at. So we're just going to grab the guest network and that will bring that with us for now. So now that that is set up, we have the travel router plugged in still. By the way, it is taking three watts of power, which is basically nothing. We'll go over here, um, and now Unify is asking me to join the guest network. So sure, we will go ahead and join that network. Um, and we have no connected devices, obviously, because my uh, iPad is sitting right here. We are still on my home Wi-Fi. That is looking good. There's very minimal options. Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, there is not an integrated controller, so we are limited to just these basic controls for the device, but that is okay because that's not going to be something we need to do when we're traveling. This is a great test of our Wi-Fi 5 speeds and the speeds are not great. So we're looking at about 130 megabits per second. And again, that is the impact of having Wi-Fi 5. So unfortunately, this device, as I mentioned about 15 times so far in this video, only has Wi-Fi 5. Modern devices have Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 7. Um, and honestly, I don't think it's a big deal because for what we're doing with the device when we're traveling, it's not gonna be a big deal to have lower speeds. It's not like we're gonna be uploading all kinds of media from our hotel room. Honestly, the hotel Wi-Fi is probably a slower speed than what we're used to at home anyways. So honestly, I think it's okay that we have slower Wi-Fi even in 2025. Now, again, with Wi-Fi 5, what we're gonna lose is some of the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 where we have multiple devices connected to it, but we also do have the ethernet port available. So we are able to use the ethernet port for certain devices that if we don't want them on Wi-Fi, we could get faster speeds on ethernet as well. So let's recap, what is the best part of this device? Well, in my opinion, I think the best part of the device is that it brings your home Wi-Fi network with you and all of your devices automatically know it and love it. So let's say you bring a Chromecast, an Apple TV, your mom's phone, I don't know, anything that already knows your Wi-Fi from home, when you bring it to the hotel room or wherever you bring it with you, it's gonna be remembered on those devices automatically, they'll join, you don't have to troubleshoot anything. It is literally a one-stop shop for everything you need when you're traveling and I love that, that's pretty awesome. I think the next best thing about the device is the size. It is literally the size of a like plain card super small super compact and I think that it's really nice because it's something portable enough you can leave it in your backpack all the time plug it in whenever you want to use it and it's just ready to go um, again like I'm somebody who always brings this battery bank with me and the fact that I can just plug it into this battery bank or anything else I could even plug it into USB on my MacBook or something and I can get Wi-Fi just like that so what do you guys think is the $80 price point a good price point honestly I think it is for what the features are it is Wi-Fi 5 that's something to remember it is a small device it's basic it gets the job done there's no advanced functionality to it you can't select your Wi-Fi band you can't do any of that kind of stuff it's purely automatic in most of the cases. I think this is a great product. Honestly, I think they could have labeled it the Wi-Fi travel router light and they could potentially release another one in the future that has potentially more features. Maybe it's a little bit bigger, more ethernet ports or something like that. Maybe an integrated battery, all that kind of stuff. But again, that's gonna drive up the cost. That's gonna drive up the size, all that kind of stuff. And for something like this, you really can't complain about the size. Size really does matter. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. I worked really hard to get this here on time. So if you like this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know. Happy New Year, and I'll see you all in the next video.